ladies and gentlemen, be here for the live stream at around 9.30 p.m. to discuss this topic, the upcoming, well, the recession we're seeing now. Nouriel Roubini, a uh, very, very renowned economist, has stated that you have to be delusional to think that it's just going to be uh, a normal or a shallow recession. We'll talk about that and a lot more. Be here at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Time for the live stream this evening. Judge blocks Atlanta District Attorney from investigating lawmaker uh, in, in the investigation going on. Now, this is a huge defeat for Democrats, a huge victory for uh, former President Donald Trump. Um, I'm reading an Axios article. An Atlanta judge has granted a Republican Georgia state lawmaker's request to disqualify the district attorney, uh, leading a probe into... Okay, so they're investigating simply because they need public relations uh, or media support going into midterms. Uh, Trump did not commit a crime. The Democrats in 2016 did the exact same things they actually, I don't want to get into it because we have to, you know, maintain YouTube-friendly guidelines, but if you look, they opposed the outcome in more states than uh, the number of states that Trump opposed. Now, there was a commercial. I don't know if you could still see the commercial, but there was a commercial of Hollywood celebrities asking for exactly what Almost exactly what, almost, almost exactly what this district attorney in Georgia is investigating. So Democrats, uh, and you can ask Stacey Abrams, still thinks that she is the actual governor of Georgia. So they don't accept results. They never do. They accuse Trump of being installed by the Kremlin. You'd have to be a complete imbecile to believe that. And um, then they say, oh, well, we accepted. We just investigated him forever and found nothing. It was probably one of the greatest lies ever told in American political history that an outgoing administration investigating an incoming president wouldn't be political and partisan and um, didn't transfer power peacefully, investigated Trump based on a dossier literally purchased and compiled by Clinton. Uh, not just purchased because the DNC... Uh, and the Clinton campaign got FEC violations for purchasing the Steele dossier, which was completely bogus and the epitome of fake news that they uh, claim to worry so much about. But we're learning from the Durham Probe Special Counsel, the upcoming, the upcoming trial in October, that there was a Clinton public relations executive working with the uh, Steele subsource. Okay, The man who helped compile the dossier was literally working with a Clinton operative which is basically all you need to know about the Democratic Party and American politics. Could you imagine if the tables were turned and Rudy Giuliani compiled a dossier against mashed potato brains saying that he couldn't find his way out of a Moscow hotel room? Could you imagine? But anyway, why it matters, State Senator Burt Jones served on the state, a slate of... Uh, da, 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 da. He has been named, along with others, uh, as possible targets of Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis's investigation. During the news, in, in a Monday order, Fulton County Superior Court judge uh, agreed with Jones that the district attorney could not subpoena or bring charges against Jones in the probe, given a political conflict. The office may still... Okay. Um, basically, Jones is also running for lieutenant, lieutenant governor and asked for Willis's disqualifications... After she supported a headline fundraisers earlier this year for Jones's Democratic opponent, Charlie Bailey. Well, then there you have it. Democrats investigating their direct political rivals. The bad Trump is investigating his direct political rivals. Oh, democracy. That's all they're doing right now. That's what they did with the Mueller probe before the midterms in 2018. Because they, they, they've been an absolute catastrophe. It's been an absolute debacle in terms of what's taken place in the economy, what's taken place in foreign policy. And, I mean, if you look, ladies and gentlemen, what do they have? What accomplishments do they have? Inflation at 9.1%. Now, uh, go to the stock market crash and, 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 and nuclear confrontation channel right below this, uh, right below in the description. If you go and you look, you will see uh, my latest segment today. BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and other countries are trying to create and develop a new global reserve currency. So if if in the future we, we lose global, U.S. dollar loses its, its reserve currency status, the beginning of that loss will be during the administration of mashed potato brains, along with the geopolitical nightmare we see in Europe. 
Um, tell me what there was not to like about Trump. We had household median incomes at its at their highest level since the what the late fifties or early sixties. So whenever anyone says, "Oh, Trump abandoned the working class," they are completely ignorant of what Trump was able to accomplish. Household median incomes were up. So even if there were uh, there was the same outsourcing problem under President Obama that President Obama has. Uh, you're not counting 2020, which, by the way, was um, an abomination in terms of Democrats gleefully tanking their economy and getting um, and getting um, uh, a, an Emmy like Andrew Cuomo for doing so. But it was not Trump that wanted Democrats to tank their economies. They did so for a political purpose, to kick Trump out of office. Don't think that it was just to uh, help and altruism and all that. But anyway, I mean, it might have been partly that, but... The political motivation was there. Uh, it might have been partly that on the part of certain politicians, but most Democratic politicians just wanted to kick Trump out of office, and they didn't care if the country suffered. So um, you just look at the the median, uh, the, the the average age of the U.S. workforce, U.S. labor force is 40, 41 years old, and all that's all you have to know. That just ask yourself if healthy 40, 41 year olds should be kicked out of their jobs. Just ask that, knowing all the data and numbers. We don't get into it, but anyway. So, 20 million, 22 million people unemployed. And I wrote about this in the Federalist in October of 2021. I predicted the stock market crash in September of 2021, and in October I was published in the Federalist. Go to the description section. You will see the published article. Also, I have two articles, one on Barry Bonds, one on Floyd Mayweather that you might enjoy. Share those articles everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. They're in the description section. But I did predict the the stock market crash that we're seeing. I predicted the stock market crash, and I predicted the economic decline. It's only going to get a lot worse, ladies and gentlemen. So we had a record low in poverty. Poverty is at 14%. It was at 10% under Trump. Inflation is at 9.1%. It was at 2% under Trump. Gas prices are 450 to $5. They were about 250 or no, 240 under Trump. So you have uh, economic growth. Real wages were up under Trump. And you have real wages were up like 1% to 2% under Trump. They're down 4.4% under mashed potato brings Joe. He's going to get impeached for Hunter's emails and voicemails and 150 financial transactions that were deemed suspicious that he knew about. He's going to get impeached. We all know that. House Republicans, Senate Republicans, the House and Senate are going to go Trump Republican, okay? They're going to impeach Mashed Potato Brains Joe. They're going to hopefully try some way to save this economy from the terrible, terrible policies when oil and gas Association sued Biden's administration, that was the beginning of the end for the U.S. economy. Well, actually, when the, the economy, when Democrats and morally superior, wonderful, apoplectic uh, media and bureaucrats tanked the U.S. economy, shut down economic activity, what they did was they opened up a Pandora's box of problems. Oil companies, oil and gas companies lost billions and billions of dollars. The supply and demand projections were obliterated. Then what happened is when Mashed Potato Brains took over in 2021, he said, okay, we're going to start up the economy again. He didn't open fast enough, but he opened the economy up. And so there was a huge spike in demand. Now we have all-time highs in commodities and, and fossil fuels. He came in, though, trying to do away with fossil fuels. So he said he banned leasing on federal lands. He did a whole bunch of other things that caused oil and gas associations to sue him. Then he reversed course. And then he tried to reverse all his policies, flooded the country full of strategic petroleum reserves, and now uh, environmental groups are suing him. But the, the only thing they have is a public relations stunt. They have all of media thinking that Trump is the embodiment of criminality. He's the Al Capone of politics, and um, he's just going to get away with everything. He's the Teflon Don, uh, Don uh, Trump, okay? The problem, however, is they committed crimes. Hunter committed crimes. Hillary did commit obvious crimes with top secret intelligence being transferred onto uh, uh, servers. Now, I want a Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump 2024. Okay, so that, so even with the top secret and classified data that she transferred and her team transferred on top secret on, on service, by the way, all the people who transferred that data, one of them in particular, ignored a subpoena, but of course they, they uh, want to imprison Steve Bannon. And they didn't imprison that person. But anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. They have nothing on Trump. They never did. 
Republicans have a lot on Democrats. They actually did commit crimes. Trump did not. Had he, commit, had he committed any crimes from 2015 until today, they would have locked him up as soon as, as they could. With Clinton, Comey went to bat. With Hunter, the entire media uh, and government is going to bat, and he'll probably get a plea deal. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. Be here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, about 9.30 p.m. Pacific for the live stream. And please, please watch the latest segment on the Stock Market Crash and Nuclear Confrontation channel. It's below in the pinned comment. If you want to support my work to my new Patreons, thank you so much. Your Patreon support is greatly appreciated.